Revelation 13. For the last few weeks, I've been giving you information about the Antichrist. We learned about him last week. Um, and then we went into some historical facts. Now, we're going to go back to verse 1 and go into it deeply uh, from this point on. And so, uh, all, the, all these weeks has just been like an introduction. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his head the name of blasphemy. And a beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet was like of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. <clears throat> and his mouth aligned, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads, and it was were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. Mm. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who was like unto the beast? Who was able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth of speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle. And then them that dwell in heaven. Lord God, there is much to cover in these verses. And I need your help. Holy Spirit, be our teacher today. I don't claim to know everything. No man does. That's what's nice about Scripture. The Scripture, the Bible says, is of no private interpretation. And so, Holy Spirit, we depend on you to open up your word today. Speak to our hearts, and we'll just thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a great beast rise out of the sea, having these heads and horns. This is known as the Antichrist, the one coming that's going to be the one world dictator who will control everything. Everything. He's going to control everything. I'm glad I'm not going to be here. The Bible promises that God will take out his church, those who are born again before the seven-year tribulation. If you think it's bad now, wait when God's people are gone, the church is gone, the Holy Spirit's gone, all hell's going to break loose. Literally. Literally. The Bible mentions the Antichrist. The, the, the New Testament word for Antichrist comes from the Greek Antichristos meaning in opposition to Christ or in substitution for Christ. And it's found only in 1 John chapter 2 and verse number 18 where it says, Little children, it is the last time as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come. Even now there are many Antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time. So here John stands in chapter 13, the great revelator, and the Bible tells us that this is an apocalyptic uh, vision. John stands, notice in verse 13, verse 1, upon the sand of the sea. The sand of the sea. That's very, very important. The sea depicts the Gentile nations. We'll get into that later on. There's going to be ten nations, Gentile nation, that the Antichrist is going to rule the world with. And uh, I'll, I'll bring you up to date with that probably next week. Keep your eye on Europe. Keep your eye on the Middle East. Keep your eye on the European common market. Keep your eye on the G summits that, are, that our president visited last week. These summits are nothing more than ten leaders of ten nations that are going to get together and control the whole world. And the average human being on planet Earth, it goes right over their head. See, learn something this morning. 
People who do, know, who do not know Christ, they think we're stupid. But you know what? We know the answer. It's all there. Amen? I know what's coming. And I'm going to, in a few weeks, I'm going to name names. I'm going to name groups. I'm going to name countries to watch out for. Especially Russia. Russia is just a sleeping bear right now. The Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 38, Russia during the tribulation is going to come down. China is going to come down to try to take care of the nation of Israel. But we'll see later. It's amazing how God takes care of his people. Amen. God opens up the ground they all die. But they are preparing you think it's coincident that the Bible says in Revelation, we get to that chapter, that over a, a, an army over 200 million is going to come against Israel? What army is over 200 million right now? China. I tell you, watch out. Russia now is making her move. She's building her power up. I laugh with it. I kind of chuckled and laughed years ago when, you know, when that wall came down? Yeah. President Ray, the wall's going to... She's just a sleeping bear. Putin will bring Russia up again to one, of, to one of the greatest powers. Where's America in this? Are you going to have to come back? And, I'll tell you where America is. Now. Well, I'm going to tell you now. You won't come back. <laughs> All this in Revelation chapter 13, verse 1, th when it says out of the sea, okay? Sand of the sea. Those are the Gentile nations. I'll get to that later on. And so John is saying here, this sea depicts Gentile nations. Genesis chapter 10, verse 5, the isles of the Gentile. It says, sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise from the end of the earth. Ye, ye that go down to the sea and all that is therein, the isles and the inhabitants thereof. Isaiah chapter 42 and verse number 10. The beast here that rises out of the sea in our verse here. This signifies the kingdom of the time of the Antichrist and the people mingled with a variety of nations. And those are the ten nations that Revelation talks about and the ten nations that Daniel talks about. They coexist. Now, the Antichrist or the beast is described here as having seven heads and ten horns, right? Verse 1. Seven heads and ten horns, calling the mind to Daniel's description of the Roman Empire that ultimately brings forth what the Bible calls the man of what? Sin. That's the Antichrist. The man of sin. There is a guy that's coming in the near future. He's called the man of sin. That's very important that you understand that. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3 will tell you that. Also, in Daniel chapter 7, verses 7 and 8, listen to this, uh, this verse. After this, I saw the night visions, and behold, teeth in it, devoured and break in pieces, and stamped the residue of his feet, and it was divorced from all the beasts, and were before it, it had ten horns. Revelation 3, 1, ten horns. Okay. Ten horns. I considered the horns, and behold, the first horn plucked up by the root, and behold, in his horn were eyes like that of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. That's Daniel chapter 7, verse 7 and 8. Remember, Daniel and Revelation go together. They talk about the same future events. Now, notice... Very important, these seven heads in Revelation 13, 1, where we're at, I want to take this slowly so you're with me. Those seven heads in, in verse number 1 are very important. These seven heads represent seven successful reigning rulers who will be contemporaries with the Antichrist. When we get to Revelation 17, 12, I'll show you that. In the book of Revelation, when you, we see horns and when you see crowns that are mentioned in verse 1, that's very important also. Because when you see crowns and, and uh, horns in scrimber, uh, Scripture, that symbolizes governmental authority, always in Scripture. Government authority, very important. 
And in this instance, they are used to blasphemy and supplant and to usurp true authority of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You understand what I'm saying this morning? The Antichrist, he wants to be the King of Kings and Lord of Lords upon the earth. He's trying to strip it away from who? Jesus Christ, who is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Satan has always wanted that. He's always wanted to be God. He's always wanted to have God's authority, but he will never get it. So he's going to try to get it through this man called the Antichrist. And so it means that, government authority. You see, through human government, by the way, human government was instituted by who? God, God right? Romans 13 will tell you that, verse 4. So it will be ultimately be perverted to blaspheme and war against God. See, the Antichrist is going to take the system that God set up to rule the world through government authority to keep men and women checked and balanced because of sin. Amen. If we didn't have rules and regulations and laws, everybody would be doing right in their own eyes. There'd be total chaos upon the earth. So whether you like authority or not, I'm glad we have it. Granted, some abuse it, but God still says in Romans 13, we are to obey the laws of the land and the authorities thereof so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life. Do you ever notice that everybody obeys the rules? It's quiet and peaceful? It's when we disobey the rules. Anarchy starts up. That's because the old nature doesn't like rules. We want to do what we want to do. You see, does not the Bible say in 1 Timothy 6, verse 15, Jesus Christ, who is the blessed and only potentate? Remember that word potentate as we go along in a few weeks. There's only one leader. There's only one spiritual leader in Christianity, and that's Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? It's not the Pope. Hang on to your hash and we get to Revelation chapter 17. I want to expose the whole system. I believe the Roman Catholic Church is the harlot church <laughs> that the Antichrist is going to sit upon and rule all the religions of the world. See, people have been laughing at that for years, see. What you forget as generations go by, we see things come to pass. Remember, when John had this vision, he had no clue what was going to happen. He just wrote down, and God told him to wrote down. So what's going to happen? He's the blessed potentate to establish his earthly kingdom. See, Jesus is according to 2 Peter 3, verse 13, where dwelleth good and righteousness. One day, Jesus Christ is going to set up his thousand-year reign, and he will reign as King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen? That's why the Antichrist wants to rule the world now while he can try to do it. Because... He knows. Satan knows his time is short. Satan knows he'll never get the kingdom. And, and you know, he's always wanted that authority. Do you remember Matthew 4 when Jesus was tempted? In the, in the, mm -hmm. And then one of the temptations was, look at all this world. If you, I'll give it all to you if you what? Worship. Bow down and worship me. I tell you, he's stupid, isn't he? Yeah. He's so stupid. You're going <laughs> All Jesus had to say was, oh, you're offering me what I created? <laughs> Who created the world and all that's in it? Well, Jesus Christ did. Satan said, well, I'll give it to you if you're but <clears throat> Christ could say, it's already mine. He's dumb. Now, I want you to notice this morning, seven successive stages of Gentile power. Verse 1, that C... Coming out of the, the sea, the land, right? All right. What that is, is Gentile power, by which the Antichrist shall come. It's represented by the seven heads and ten horns in our text, verse 1. Everybody with me so far? All right. As we approach the conclusion of the matter, 
I want you to notice this is where a lot of, and I'll say it because it's my profession, a lot of pastors make a terrible mistake. They'll go into Revelation and then they'll read every commentator on planet Earth that's written it about it. And they think those commentators are right. They're only human. Right. Right. Remember this. When you study the book of Revelation, it's okay to read other people. But they're not God. Right. And they're not always right. Mm -hmm. Remember that. You see, I want to tell you something that's very interesting this morning. Who is the interpreter of Scripture? The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is your teacher. Mm -hmm. Not John Calvin. Not Matthew Henry. Not John Gill. Not Henry Baxter. I could go on. I got them all in my library. I got every commentary in the world. I even got some that go back to the 1600s and 1800s that are rare. I'll read them. So that's pretty good reading, but I'm going to say, but well, I'm not going to take that as gospel fact. Let the Holy Spirit, you that are saved this morning and born again, He will teach you the book of Revelation. Amen? Does not Proverbs 3.32 say, For the froward is an abomination to the Lord, but His secret is with the righteous. God will reveal to you secret things. Amen? Oh, man, that's what I like about Scripture. So these seven nations, these seven world powers are the Egypt, 1600 to 1200 B.C., Assyria, 900 to 600 B.C., Babylon, 606 to 536 B.C., the Media Persia Empire, 536 to 330 B.C., Greece, 330 to 146 B.C., and then the Roman Empire, 200 B.C. to 400 A.D. And the revived Roman Empire, which seems is going to be revived again, who do I believe it is? Now, this is not, you know, you can take my word for it. Okay, this is what I believe. You don't have to believe it. Okay? I believe the old revived Roman Empire is going to be the European Union. Watch for the European Union. Because in that union, there are ten, ten nations. <laughs> and that union was formed, it, it was called the European Economic Community in 1957 to 1958. Through that treaty on, Euro, on European Union, that treaty, which was uh, enacted November the 1st in 1993, so when you look at out of the sea in verse 1 in our text, with the Roman Empire to answer the question, we must read prophecies of Daniel. Daniel 2 verse 31 says, we are given a description, remember, of Nebuchadnezzar's dream? And in that dream, you'll see in Daniel chapter 2 verse 31 through 33, you'll see Daniel spoke of the head was Gold, which was Babylon, the breasts and the arms, immediately of Persia. Brass, Greece, the legs of iron were who? The Roman Empire. His feet was part into iron and clay, the revived Roman Empire. The all, and then God gave Nebuchadnezzar's dream and interpretation to Daniel in response to believing prayer. And, that, and Daniel said, The mercies of God of heaven concerning the secret, then was the secret revealed, Daniel 2, verse 18 and 19. He says, Thou, O king, that's Nebuchadnezzar, art this head of gold, the Babylonian Empire. And he told what was going to happen to Nebuchadnezzar, the Medes, the Pers, Darius, and all of that. The Greek Empire, Cyrus, and then Alexander the Great. You all studied Alexander the Great, right? I hope you did in history. They still teach that, Gary? Yes, okay. Because <laughs> it's secular. But what's neat, they could get the spiritual part in there. It'd be kind of nice. But that's what happened. So the fourth kingdom mentioned in Daniel 2 is the Roman Empire. 
And it shall be strong as iron, it says. Now notice verse 2. And the beast which I saw like unto a leopard, his feet were as feet of a bear, his mouth and mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. So John here describes his vision. Notice the word beast there. As like unto a leopard, and his feet were as feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, verse 2. Simply, similar, the Old Testament prophet Daniel was given a vision of four great beasts of prey, which came where? Out of the sea, matching Revelation 13.1. Daniel 7, 3, Daniel describes the Babylonian Empire, the lion, the eagles. The second, the Medo Persia, was represented as a bear. And then the Medo Persia, Babylonian, in the mouth of the teeth of it. And they thus arise and they devour much flesh. That happened. The third world empire, Greece, was depicted as a lion, which speaks of the swiftness of Alexander the Great. When that guy conquered, man, did he conquer. He, whew, it was a quick conquering. See, it was already prophesied way back in Daniel. But Daniel didn't know it at the time. So what happened here? The Roman Empire was likened to a dreadful beast with ten horns. He says, After this I saw in the night visions, behold, a fourth beast, dreadful, terrible, strong, exceedingly, and had great iron of teeth. It devoured it and brake in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns, Daniel 7.7. 7. And so Nebuchadnezzar's dream of a great image agrees with Daniel's vision of four great beasts. And John's vision of the beast which was like unto a leopard, a bear, and a lion in Revelation 13 too. See how they all come together? Now it is said that the dragon, Satan, gave the Antichrist his power and seat and great authority according to verse 2 of our text. But how could the devil give governmental power and authority to the Antichrist when God never placed them in Satan's hands? That's a good question. You ever thought about that? How is that possible? Especially when Matthew 28, 18 says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Hmm. Sadly, however, when the children of this world give obedience to the devil then they acknowledge his illegal seizure of that power. The, remember Romans 6, 16? Ye know, ye, uh, know ye not that to whom ye yield yourself servants, to what? Obey his servants ye are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. Amen? Amen? See, you this morning, if you're not saved, you're either going to serve, obey sin and love it and, and, and live in sin and die and go to hell, or you can get saved and born again and God will give you a new spirit and you can live righteously upon the earth. Amen? It's, it's either one. You either serve sin or you serve the Savior. One of the two. Amen? There's no in-between. And when you choose sin over the Savior, that's when governments and authorities get all whacked out. Now you wonder why the political system is so corrupt today? Because they are serving sin instead of the Savior. They're supposed to be making decisions that are righteous and to help the people of this world. Amen? But instead, they, they serve themselves and they make laws themselves so they can get rich themselves, so they can, so they can have this 
authority. They want the authority that God should have. Amen? I hope our governor's watching me and you too. <laughs> did you hear what he said this week? Yes, I did. In so many words, he said, this is the way it's going to be. It's going to be my way or the highway. Yeah. Authority. authority. I'm the authority, and I'm going to tell you what to do. Yeah. Well, maybe we need a revolution again in this country. There's only one person I'm accountable to, and that's Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't care what the authority says. You want to put me in jail, do it. But I'm going to tell you what, no authority is going to tell, make me disobey the principles of this book. Amen. None. And if I have to go to jail for it, be it so. Got news for you, Governor. You can, it ain't your way or the highway. Ah, uh, you're forgetting one authority that can take you out quickly if he wants to. And that's God. You see, what's interesting with Satan here in verse number two of our text. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter two that Satan is the prince of this power of the air and the god of this world, 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, right? You, God of this world. Now catch that phrase when you read it. That word God, it doesn't have a capital G. It's a small case G, which means Satan. Satan is the ruler of this world. And he loves to get a hold of people to do his bidding. And some people don't even recognize it. See, he wants power. And what happens... Only because he has been crowned as such through a willful surrender of ourselves. You surrender yourself to Satan, he'll use you. The Antichrist will be the human epitome of self-love promoted by Lucifer. When he attempted to seize the heavenly throne, he tried in Isaiah... But he failed. Do you remember Isaiah 14? For thou, that's Lucifer, have said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high God, amen? And that's the whole point of the Antichrist. Taking over those nations, one world dictatorship, he'll go with the Jews, he'll set up the temple during that time, he'll walk in, he'll blaspheme, he'll say, I am God, you fall down and worship me. And people will. Let me ask you a question this morning. Who do you worship? Do you worship religion? Or do you worship Almighty God through Jesus Christ, His wonderful Son? You see, who you serve determines the way you live. Amen. Notice in verse 3, and I saw one of his heads that were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. Wow. Understanding that the beast was seven heads, remember verse 1, represents Gentile world power. And the apostles saw one of the beast's heads as if it were wounded, verse 3 in our text. This referred to the collapse of the Roman Empire in the 5th century when the Vandals plundered the city of Rome in 455 A.D. And the last Roman emperor, Augustulus, was gone, 476 A.D. The beast's deadly wound was healed, remember verse 3, indicates that the Lamb of Revelation anticipated Satan's attempt to revive the Roman Empire. 
The Bible says in Revelation 22, 13, Christ, the Lamb of God, Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He is the first and the last, not the Antichrist. What is known as the Holy Roman Empire originally is now Germany. Watch Europe. It's Germany right now. The old Roman Empire, when you put it on a map and put it in today's world, you'll see the Roman Empire consisted of Germany, now Austria, the Czech Republic, Switzerland, Eastern France, the Low Countries, and parts of the Northern and Central Italy. Italy? Guess who lives in Italy? The Pope. What happened? There was an attempt of the papacy to enlarge its power through the control of secular governments. Remember, the Antichrist has got to control governments. That's why we need to pray for our government. And so what happened, to get that control, beginning with the coronation of Charlemagne, remember him in history? The king of Franks in 800 AD, he, he was appointed by Pope Leo III to the resigning of the imperial title of Holy Roman Empire by Francis II, the, the Emperor of Austria in 1806. Now, Satan's power struggle. Now, he's using religion to get into governments to take over. Understand that? Governments can be taken over. People, wake up, Americans. Our government is being taken over by secularism, by Satan's principles. And we're letting it happen. You don't think Satan wants to control the government of the United States? You betcha. And he is. Now do you understand Ephesians 6.12? For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness and what? High places. Don't you understand? Understand something this morning, believer. In our government, right now, in the Senate and the House and the representatives and the Congress, even all the way to the Vice President and President, Satan has got his people in that government yeah. that's going to influence them. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Because he wants what? Power. Right. I don't trust any government. When you see some of the most stupidest laws that are being passed, your mind goes, what in the world are they thinking of? Where'd they get their thinking from? Spiritual wickedness where? High places. Upon what? Rulers. Wake up, people. Man. And it's like a telling mirror, and it like, whoosh, goes over the head. That's why I was so excited. I think I said it last Sunday. I was so excited when finally one politician got it right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Did you listen to Governor Huckabee? Yeah. He was on TV and Huckabee, they asked him, what's the problem with the Middle East? And Huckabee says, well, the guy says, is there ever going to be a peace? Huckabee says, no, they're not. not you see the look on the guy's face. He says, that will never be settled. You know what he said? Until Jesus plants his feet on the Mount of Olives. Amen. Then there will be peace. Yep. And he added, this is a spiritual warfare between the line of Ishmael and Isaac. Amen. Man, he said, I go, man, preacher, man, keep going. Amen. Our dumb leaders don't get that. Right. They can pass all the peace treaties they want. It will never happen. Right. Right. Never. The book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> read the book. Yeah, I like to read the book. That's it. Didn't not Jesus say there's going to be wars and rumors of wars till he comes? Yeah. There's always going to be war in the Middle East until Jesus comes. Amen? Amen. Until that time, you're going to see governments fight, fight, fight. And when you see, 
Oh, good night. Even in Connecticut, they broke for a, a recess, right, this week? And they, and they couldn't even, they were fighting even before, after they broke up. <laughs> nothing got settled, nothing got passed. No. Satan won again. Yeah. And watch, when they come back into session, watch the foolishness that comes out of these people's mouths. And when, they, when you hear it, think this, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. They don't want to hear our view. They don't want to hear about righteousness and holy living and making, making decisions based on the principles of God's word. They don't want to hear that. All they want to hear is what's in it for me. Oh, I could go on and on. Amen. Oh, climate change. Are you kidding me? I love these climate changers, right? They, they, they preach against our president because he would be backed out of the treaty. Amen to that. Yeah. And uh, these, these, you know what cracks me up with these climate changes? Guess what they fly around in? <laughs> They're million dollar jets yes. that yeah. pollute the air. <laughs> and they live in million dollar mansions that pollute the air. Yeah. 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 So it's kind of a hypocrisy, isn't it? it, is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> oh, boy. It's all a battle, people. It's all a battle. So what happened? The imperial title of Holy Roman Emperor was virtually hereditary to the Austrian House of Habsburg beginning in the 5th century. Exodus 22.3 says that thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil, neither shalt thou speak to a cause to decline after many to risk judgment. So alluding, so what happened? The Otto von Bismarck German Empire in 1871 to 1918 were the equivalents of Caesars. And an empire, Germany, Kaiser, and the word called, remember the word right? Yep. Okay? Respectively, as the second Holy Roman Empire, the second right, Adolf Hitler referred to Nazi Germany as the Third Right. Like the Bible says, Thou hast joined hand in hand, and the wicked shall not be unpunished, but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. Proverbs 11.21 Each attempt to revive the Roman Empire have failed. Every one of these nations that I gave you Every one of those leaders tried to conquer the world and the Jews, and they all failed. failed. Hitler was the last one. Yep. There's one coming yep. that's going to try to do it again. That's the Antichrist. And he will fail. So what happened? Each attempted to revive the Roman Empire. And now, the political and economic strength of the modern European Union became stronger in the year 2000 and it's getting stronger presently. They want power. But what does the Bible say? In Psalm 62, 11, God has spoken once, twice, have I heard this, that power belongeth unto God. And so since the beast out of the sea, verse 1, is both a system, Gentile world power, in the form of a revived Roman Empire, and a man that is called the Antichrist, who comes out of that system with a deadly womb, in verse 3, most likely will also refer to an actual womb to the Antichrist's head, because the Greek word for wound here means plague. Interesting. The Bible says Christ was wounded for what? Our transgressions. You'll think it's coincidence that he has to be wounded? <laughs> By his stripes we are healed, verse 5 of Isaiah 53. The Bible says in Matthew 24, 24, There shall arise false Christ and false prophets shall show great signs and wonders. You must have possible. It shall even 
Fool the very elect. Because power, the power to create life, hmm, the power to create life belongs to who? God. God. Yeah. Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and the life. See, the Antichrist resurrection will be a lying wonder. And then shall that wicked, the Antichrist, be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. <laughs> Even him, that's the Antichrist, who's coming after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, Second Thessalonians chapter 8 and verse number 9. And then, verse 4, I'll, stop, I'll do that one and stop. Notice our text. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. They worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Well, remember, worship is directed to who? God the Father through Jesus Christ the Lord. That's where your direction should be. You remember John 4, Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when he shall neither in this mountain nor yet in Jerusalem worship the Father, but the hour cometh, and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in what? Truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. John 4, 21, 22, and 23. So what happened in verse 4 of our text in a false imitation of relationship of Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, the Antichrist will be instrumental in directing worship to him, to the Antichrist. Satan would have no interest in giving power to the Antichrist if it would not somehow come back to him for worship. That's right. The two colluding together. In Matthew chapter 4, Jesus refused that type of leading. But the Antichrist will gladly receive it. Notice verse 4. Who worshiped the dragon and the beast? Who? All the world. Woo. Who wondered after the beast, verse 3. Are the they of verse 4 who deceived into worshiping Satan and the Antichrist. Of course, today you wonder, back then when John wrote this, he's saying, well, how can that be? How can this one guy rule the whole world and know what, how does he know what's going on? Well, we know how today, don't we? Of course we do. Of course we do. It comes through global communications, the internet. Smart, I tell you, I wouldn't buy a smart TV if I were you. It's smart, all right. It's going to watch your house. I was talking to a guy the other day. He bought one. You look at the TV, and there's a little, little circle in the bottom. He taped it up. How do you know that you're not being spied on? This government's powerful, people. And all of us who are ex-military, we thought things were smart back then. You haven't seen nothing now. I was on a ship in the Navy, one of the most up-to-date ships in the world at that time. We could go down a river we could go down anywhere, turn on the, elect turn on the spy system, we could hear mm -hmm. people talking in houses. Wow. Wow. I was on a spy ship. It's amazing. And I thought, what have they got today? Mm. They're here. <laughs> so be, watch out. Yeah. All I'm saying is watch out. You know, people think, well, you're nuts. Well, mm. call me nuts. 
Be careful of the electronics. You know, you, you just got to be careful today. Because the, the Antichrist, you know, remember when, when, remember when Revelation and John said, uh, you know, the two witnesses are going to die and all the world shall see them? Well, 40 years ago, people are wondering, well, how, that's impossible. How in the world is the world going to see the... Well, today we know how. Yeah, satellite. You, you pop on the TV and watch the news, you can look at what happened in London yesterday, right? I'm not there, but through communications, I'm right there. I can see everything. Now do you see why people are not laughing at the scriptures no more? See, 50, 60 years ago, they ah, but now we see European common market. Now we see the credit, I'm getting all this later on, the credit card system. We're going to go into a cashless society. Everything. See, now people are not laughing anymore. These barcodes and stuff. Did you know they're, I forget what state it's in, they're actually putting chips in people's hands? And they know, and then they know everything about you. You know what they're using for an excuse? Well, all the medicals on there. Yeah, right. Easier to do that than look up paperwork. So you, you, you mark, then you go through a, a screening scan, and there it pops up. They're using that, but the Antichrist system world saying, aha, I'm going to watch. Sooner or later, all of us are going to have that. Or some kind of mark, you know. It all, it all starts out simple. I, I, remember, I remember the first time I went to a grocery store, I said, what, what are all these black marks for? Yeah. Well, it's, it's, so it's easier inventory. And, no, you know, the, the one world dictator is going to control your food. Right. You won't be able to buy or sell without the mark. <laughs> like I said, I'm glad we're not going to be there. And so what happens here, the world is ready. The, 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 the climate's there, the worship's there for a one world church. But Jesus said, love not the world, right? That's the world system. Be careful of the world system. They used to laugh at me when I was a kid. I, I come from a little hick town in Maine. I like that type of life. Yeah. Quiet. No electronics, this and that. When I grew up, we li lived off the land, had gardens. It was quiet. It was peaceful. Then technology had to come in and ruin it all. TV started coming in. Radio started coming. Or all these, they can be good if they're used right. But, that, but what happens, people flock to that and then people started to get lazy. I was telling my Sunday school class this morning, kids now don't even have imaginations. They're stuck that little pad. I'm glad, I, I'm glad my kids are all grown up. Because I think if that would have been now, I would have said no iPads in my home. You can't, I mean, you know what happens? They don't know how to think anymore. What happens? That little thing controls them. Lord, help them. If they took it away, they'd probably say, I can't live. You probably can't. It's a serious matter, amen? Parents, watch out. If that controls your child, you don't think Satan's going to... How do you know what they're watching? What are they watching? What are they doing? Who are they talking to? Amen? I told my son for class, I said, do a challenge to your kid this week. Give him a paper cardboard box and say, go play with it. <laughs> now you laugh at that, right? Yeah. That's what I grew up with. Man, I, I, I can come up with 50 ways having a good time with a paper box. <laughs> because I had to think in order to do something with it. See, these things today, they tell the kids what to do. They wouldn't know how to think if they knew how, they don't know how to think. No, sad. 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 And what's going to happen? It's going to control their life. 
And then one day when something happens, you're going to look back and say, I should have checked that thing more often. Yeah. So I programmed last night this uh, kit. Yeah, kick. 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 Oh, all the kids know what kit is. Kick. 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 Yeah. K-I-K. Yeah. Kick. You know what that is, parents? That's a, that is a famous website for who? For children. For children. For children. And guess who's on it all the time? Sexual predators. Pedophiles. Predators. One pedophile contacted a kid on that thing and went away. She went with that person. That person, mm -hmm. and that person slit her throat. Mm -hmm. Parents, I'm going to give you some advice. If your child has that thing, delete it. It's, there's, there's it's one of the greatest tools so for pedophiles. Yeah. They don't know who they're talking to. All they're doing is texting. They don't know if it's a pedophile. And what happened last night, they actually got a hold of a pedophile who did time, and he, they, you know, they came, you know, so they wouldn't recognize him. He took, it only took him 14 seconds to get a girl. That's right. 14 seconds he had a girl. All he typed was, I am lonely. That's all he typed. You have to be so careful today, people. Don't trust anybody. The only one you can trust, and that's Jesus Christ. So in our text today, the Bible says in verse 4, who was like unto the beast who was able to make war with him? The one world dictator. He's going to use the strength of human government to measure his success. But why? Because human government was established by who? God. He wants to mimic it. In keeping with the Antichrist praise, the Antichrist shall be a man of military and political power who will be responsible for the covenant with many in Daniel 9, 27. So be careful. The Bible says in Daniel 7, 25, shall speak with words, great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws. They shall be given into his hand until the time times are dividing of time. It's all getting prepared. Amen? My question to you this morning is this. He is coming. He wants world power and world worship. Who are you worshiping this morning? I pray that you're worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> you ever notice why I give an invitation every Sunday morning? I don't do it for the fun of it. I do it because God said we're born in sin. What are you going to do with your sin? The world's going to give their sin to the one world dictator one day. But you don't have to do that. Do you realize this morning that sin separates you from God? When God looks down at you, notice one of the songs this morning. Our best is filthy rags. We're dirty in God's sight. God's holy. We're sinful. How in the world are you going to meet God in that condition? There's only one way. And that's through Jesus Christ. That's why he died for you. That's why he died for your sin. Amen? He hung on the cross and shed his blood so that we could have the remission of sins. Jesus Christ is the only one that can forgive you of your sin. I can't. Religion can't. Only Jesus can. Amen. Amen. Please don't go out of here this morning and die in your sin. Because if you die in your sin, the Bible says, He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God shall abide upon you. You're going to receive the full wrath of God if you die today without Christ. And that full wrath is eternity in hell. Of course, you always get the old religion as well. Well, God isn't a God of love. He sends people to hell. God does not send people to hell. You do it yourself by rejecting His Son. Jesus Christ died for you so that you can escape hell. But it's got to be your choice. Who do you choose today? 
your sin and your flesh and that world and you die in it lost? No relationship with God? Or are you going to choose righteousness? You're going to choose life in Jesus Christ. Amen? That's the most important decision you're going to make today. Life or death, which one do you want? It's your choice. Let's stand and sing.